a new file where I can type my commands here and then I'll see the output. So when I type uh, when I type the command here, the output should display on the other side. I still have the workspace. So whatever variables that I create should be able to be seen here. So if I create a variable called x and give it a value 2, then I will learn the section, this section. The output is displayed as 2 on this side. And then on the workspace, uh, the variable 2 is seen there. So I can create another variable called, called for example, y is equals to 3. And uh, it can learn. So I now have two variables, x and y. x is 2, y is 3. In the workspace, I have the variables x and y. And uh, the x has a value 2, y has a value 3. Then uh, on the ribbon here, there are more tools that I can use. There are more tools on the ribbon. I go to Live Editor. You see there is a section break. I can create a section break here so that I can get uh, another space where I can enter uh, more variables or more commands. If I want to type some text, I can click on the text here so that uh, I get the place where I can type some text. And now I can say maybe the sum of two numbers. This is not a command. This is just a text section. So I'm going to put uh, another section break. And then I have uh, now here again where i can put the command i'll put z is equals to x plus y then i'll learn this section to get z I run the section get the z variable z as five and you can say the variable z has been created in the workspace and it has a value five now sometimes i don't want the output to be displayed here on the output screen. So we can suppress the output by adding a, a semicolon there. So when the, I run the section, let me shade this one so that it doesn't look like uh, the same thing times 2i, for example. So the plus. 2 times y. y is 3, so 2 times y is 6. So this would expect a value of 8. And uh, But now, because I've used the semicolon, there will be no output on this other side. So when I learn the section, there is no output. But uh, the variable z has been created here with a value 8. Variable z has been created with the value 8. You can say the value in the workspace. Now, uh, I can uh, have a matrix. Let me create a matrix with uh, two rows and three columns. I'm going to call it matrix A, 2, 5, 7. Then the second law is 1, minus 2, 3. So I run this section and I have the my matrix here. As with a, it's a 2 by 3. So if I type uh, A, 2, 3. 
This is the element in the second law, third column. The second law, this is the first law, second law, third column. So I expect the output to be three. So when I learn the section, I should get uh, the answer is three. The element a to three, a to three is three, which is the value I was expecting. Now, sometimes uh, we may notice that uh, we have made an error when creating this uh, element here. When creating this element here, or when creating this matrix, maybe one of the elements here, like this one, was not supposed to be one. Maybe it was supposed to be minus one, and I want to replace. I notice that uh, this element one is uh, in the second law, first, first column. So it is the element a two comma one. The first, the element in the second law, first column. And I not, I realized that I made an error. So this element was supposed to be minus one. So I will type a to one is equals to I put uh, the the square bracket then minus one. When I learn this section, now I get the output as A. You can see now you can compare this to A was two, five, seven, one, minus two, three. And I wanted to replace the element a to 1 with minus 1, this element here. So I've replaced with the element minus 1. So now I have the matrix A as 2, 5, 7, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Now also, uh, I may also realize that maybe I don't want uh, the third, the third law, the third column, for example. Maybe I want to delete uh, the third column. How do I, how can I access the third column? Now, the third column uh, can be accessed by typing A. Now, we have the elements in the, in the first law, which is Set the element seven, which is a one three. You see a a one three, and uh, we also have the element uh, a two comma three. These are the two elements seven and three. And if we run this section. We shall see the two elements seven and three. These are the elements in the third column. Now I want to delete these two elements. How do I do that? So I write A. Now see that uh, the, the row number, or rather the column number is three, but in the row here, where I should have the row, I have both one and two. So to select all values, I'll just put the color, the full color. And you see this one now should access that column. If I lock the section, now I have seven, three. So now what I have, what I do if I want to delete this, I just replace with uh, something empty. I just type a four column three is equals to empty. There is nothing, no element. I don't want elements there. So when I learn the section, now I have A as a two by two matrix. You can see now the third column has been deleted. Now I have A as two minus one, five 
my basket. There is no that color. Sometimes I may also, I may also want to add a color, or maybe I want to add a low. Suppose I want to add another low below the second low, the third low. The third row. I want now A to be a 3 by 2. So I type A, uh, the third row. A doesn't have the third row. I want to add. Uh, so I'll add the elements in all columns. So for the column, I'll just put the full column. Then I type the elements I want to place there. So maybe I want uh, to put the value 4 and 8. I cross the bracket. Notice that we are using the square bracket. If I run the section, now I have A as a 3 by 2 matrix. It has three rows and uh, two columns. So these are some of the operations you can perform with matrices. You can delete a row, you can delete a column. You can add a row, you can add a column. You can replace some elements of the matrix uh, with some of with those operations. So there are many operations that uh, you may want to perform. You can do the transpose. The transpose, uh, let's say the transpose of a matrix. Transpose of uh, the matrix. Uh, matrix. Now, you realize that this one is highlighting something so because this one is a command rather than a text, but I wanted to do a text. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, look at this, which is a command. I come here and say, no, this one is not a command. This one is supposed to be a text. It is now a text. Once I have a text, uh, this one I can even do some, I can add a line, I can make it bold, I can uh, make it italic, I can perform operations uh, with text just like in MS Word or any other word editor. Now, uh, then I put a section break. So I want to create a matrix B. What do I want? I want uh, to create a matrix B. Uh, I want to create a matrix B like this. B is equals to A transpose. The transpose of A. Uh, I want to create a matrix B, which is the transpose of A. So how do I do this? To create a transpose, to, to transpose a matrix, we use, we use uh, the operator A. This one, this 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 operator. I, I, maybe I can put it in bracket. So we write uh, thus we uh, thus we write we write uh, in a matrix or match. We shall write B is equals to A prime like that. That will mean that B is equals to the transpose of A. B is equals to the transpose of A. Now, you realize that this one is a text. So if, this one I cannot run. I cannot run. There is nothing to run there. But I can create another section here where I can have now 
B is equals to the transpose of A. And what was our A? See that A was a, a two a three by two matrix. So we expect B to be a two by three matrix. So when I learn this command, I have the matrix B. And you can see now what was the co the row of A here now becomes the column of B. The second row is the second column, the third row is the third column. So B is a two by three matrix. And you can see now if I type uh, size, size of B, I think we had looked at uh, this command for determining the size of the matrix. And I learned this section, size of B, B is a two by three. But uh, size of A, If I type size of uh, the matrix A, you will see that uh, A is a 3 by 2. A is a 3 by 2 matrix. Now, uh, I can have another matrix that I can call C, which is the product of A and B. Because uh, a, three, a 2 by 3 can be multiplied by 3 by 2 to give us a 2 by 2. So if I like C is equals to B uh, times A, B is a 2 by 3, A is a 3 by 2, so I'll expect a 2 by 2 matrix, and C is a 2 by 2. But if I write uh, another matrix D, and like this is equals to A times B. A was a 3 by 2, and B is a 2 by 3. So when I multiply in that order, I will expect a 3 by 3 matrix. So I run this section, and I say C is a 2 by 2, B is a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, uh, we can find the determinant by using the operator, the determinant of C, determinant of uh, the matrix C, I'll give uh, this, this uh, a name that is equals to that. So that I run this section and get the determinant of C is equals to 17. You see, the, this one is the same as writing. See that, uh, sorry. See that when I write the determinant, the determinant of C, this is the same as 21 times 93, 21 times 93, minus 44 times 44. The product of the elements is the principal diagonal, minus the product of the other two elements. That is the determinant of C, of the matrix C. And uh, you, you, you can say the value is 17, as we had obtained here. Uh, so the command D D E T. You put the 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 brackets, the round brackets, then C will give you the determinant of C. If I want the inverse, if I want the inverse of the matrix C, I will write. Uh, let's let us let us let us call it. Uh, Let's, let me call it uh, another matrix. I'll just call it F. F is the inverse of C. So I'll use the command INV of C 
This should give give me the inverse of the matrix C. So when I learn this section, I get uh, F is the inverse of C. Uh, I think the F is not displaying everything because of the decimals. But uh, if I double click the F in the workspace, I'll be able to see that uh, F is a two by two matrix here. F is a two by two matrix. So now these are some of the operations you can do with the uh, matrices. Uh, there are many other operations we can do uh, with matrices. So you see that we can find the determinant, we can find the term, the inverse. See that I can also find the determinant of D here because D is also a square matrix. So if I, I write uh, the determinant of D and uh, this one I call it D like that, then I learn that section, I get the determinant of D is zero. So if the determinant of, of a matrix is zero, then uh, the matrix has no inverse. Such a matrix, we call it the singular matrix. So D here, the matrix D in this case is a singular matrix. It has no inverse. But C is not singular because the determinant is non-zero. Now, uh, these are some operations we can do with the the matrices in matrix, and we, as you said, there are many other operations we can do. We looked at uh, the colon operator. If we want to generate a series, a series of numbers, we'll be generating a series. with a colon operator. Uh, so we write this one is generating a series with a colon operator. We write for example A is equals to 1, then we put a colon, then we put 5, this will give a series of numbers of integers 1 to 5. Uh, so I run and I get A has the values 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 5. It will have the values 1, 2, 3, up to 5. You can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, uh, I may, I may probably let me use two so that I generate only two numbers, one and two. I probably may want to generate values, not integers. Maybe I want the values from zero point from one, then one point two, one point four, one point six, one point eight, then two. So I put the step length zero point two. Then colon two. So I have the first value, the step length, then the last value. So I will be now I'll be generating values from one using steps of zero point two. So you see the values we have z we have one one point two. 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, and 2. So that if if I now type, for example, A4, what is A4? The fourth value here, the fourth entry, we get the value is 1.6 because we have 0, sorry, 1. 
1.2 is the second one, 1.4, then 1.6. So we can generate a series of numbers uh, with uh, those. Now, when, when you have such a series, say for example, let me generate another series of numbers, say B is equals to the numbers 1 to 10. And uh, I run this one, I generate the series of numbers 1, 2, 3, up to 10. I want the sum of 10 numbers, I'll just write sum, sum of uh, B. This will add all the elements of that vector. So when I run, I should get a value of 55. If I want the sum of 100, the first 100 integers, I generate 100 integers and get the sum. Run, I'll get 5050. This is the sum of the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 100. 5050. So basically, these are some of the operations. We can also do the product. The product. We should write product of the elements of B. Prod is for product. This one is the sum, then the product. So I can call the sum. Let me call it uh, the sum B. It's equals to that, then B product is equals to that. I want to use small b here because we have used small b for some reason. The product and the sum, then I will learn this. I get the sum of b values is 50, 50. And then the product is a very large number. Maybe let's use numbers 1 to 5 that we can make sense out of this. So when I run, I'll get the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. And uh, it is possible to add that and get the sum is 15. Then the product is 1 times 2. 1 times 2. You see the elements of B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the product is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. That's the basically factorial 5, which is 120. Uh, which is 120. So uh, we can have those operations. We have talked about the dimension of a matrix. We have talked about the inverse using the I and V operator. We have talked about deleting some elements or even replacing elements of a matrix. Now, I want to talk about uh, the relational and uh, okay. I want to talk about the relational and logical operators. Uh, relational relational and logical operators the logic when we want to compare values so we have we have these operators. Uh, we have the operators such as the equals to. Uh, when we want to ask ourselves, are the numbers equal? Equals to. We use uh, this. Equals, equals, equals. We are asking are these two numbers equal? So, for example, we ask ourselves, is uh, 
2 equals to 2. These are all Jacob operator asking ourselves. If 2 is equal to 2, the output will be 1. If 2 is not equal to 2, the output will be 0. So this one is saying logical 1, meaning that uh, the, the relationship is true. But if I write 2 equals equals 3, this is a false statement. 2 is not equal to 3, but we have said it's equal to 3. So the output will be a value 0 meaning that uh, it is a force but this one is false we have uh, two not equal to so we use the we use the tilde sign then equals so, for example, we write here 2 is not equals to 3. To 3. This should give the output as a true. This is a true statement. 2 is not equals to 3 is true. So, the output should be 1. But if I write uh, 2 is not equal to 2, then the output will be 0. Because that's a false statement. That one is false. So the logical 0, meaning that uh, it is false. We have uh, other, other uh, logical operators, like less than, uh, less than. And this one just uses the normal less than sign. We have four, we have greater than. Which is just uh, the greater than sign. Uh, we have others uh, like greater than or equals to less than or equals to uh, 5 we have uh, uh, less than or equal to and the operator here is uh, less than equals we also have <coughs> Greater or equal to. We use uh, greater than followed by the equals sign. We have the and. Uh, what do we have? Uh, the and. There we use the ampersand operator. Ampersand. We have the all. And uh, the symbol used here is the vertical line. Just a vertical line. These are, these are, are Boolean. This Boolean functions or to return the value true or false. We are saying, we are asking, is this statement true or false? A true uh, value, an output of one will indicate that the, out, the, the operation indicated there is a true statement, like uh, two is equals to, is equals equals to three, this one is false. But when we write 2 is not equal to 3, that one is a true statement. So the first one here would output false. This one would output true, a value 1. This one would give 0. This one would give 1. 
So if we like that, we would say two outputs. Uh, let me call them, give them some variables here so that we can uh, let me give the call this one x1 uh, then call this one x2 so x1 x1 is a statement 2 is equals 3 2 is equals to 3 that one should be a false statement so x1 is false. x2 is a statement. 2 is not equal to 3. That one is a true statement. So the output is 1. If I put uh, x3, x3 is the statement. 2, other 2 is uh, less than 3. That one will also be a false statement. Uh, because two is we know two is uh, less than is not less than three. Uh, sorry, two is less than three, so that should be a true statement. So the output should be one. So x three is a true statement. If if I write uh, another statement x four. And say this is, for example, 2 is greater than 3, then we know that one is a false statement because 2 is not greater than 3. So the output is expected to be 0. The output is 0. Yeah. Uh, so we can perform uh, those kind of operations just like we do in discrete mathematics. So an output of 1 means that uh, the expression is a true statement and output of zero indicates a false statement. So basically uh, we'll be having the output as one or zero for a Boolean operator. Now we have what we call the dot operations. And I want us to look at uh, the dot operation. This is a dot, just a dot like that. Operations. With the uh, matrices and vectors. So, the dot operations with matrices and vectors. So, I want to have some matrix. I want to have some vector. I will create uh, some two vectors. Then, I want to multiply. So, for example, for example, I have, uh, you are given some vectors. Two, two row vectors. Vectors uh, x and y. X and uh, y. Say you have, I want to create two vectors, two row vectors. I can have row vectors or column vectors. So x is equals to, say, the vector with the elements 2, 4, 5 and y in another vector with the elements 4, 7, uh, 7, 1 uh, Maybe I should have used uh, the spacing here, Pareto, like that. 
and uh, uh, this is not even what I want exactly. Let me see. It's not giving me what I need. So maybe I'll use mm, it's not working exactly like uh, Rapex. So let me remove it and use the other equation. So I'll put the vector x, x is equals to So I have a pick a three by three, a three a one by three. So two four seven then y y is equals to another one by three so let me put the brackets one by three select matrix so one by three so maybe five eight one so i want to uh, this one is already putting the brackets I'm having the double brackets. Let me just remove some. Ah, sorry. Let me create the matrix again. Five, eight, one. So I have uh, two vectors x and y. Now, what I want is to multiply the elements of x with the corresponding elements of y. Now, remember, if we were doing the normal operations with the uh, uh, matrices or with vectors, we can have the dot, what we call the dot product. We multiply uh, x. We multiply the dot product, what we call the uh, dot product. If we want the dot product of these two vectors, uh, we shall multiply x by the transpose of y. So we can write uh, something like, uh, we can write something like uh, x, uh, we can write something like x, uh, times the transpose of y y transpose uh, this is y transpose so so that we first transpose our y uh, sorry this is y transpose we we'll first get the transpose of the vector y, and this will be giving us 2 times 5, which is, uh, we add 4 times 8. Uh, this is not exactly what uh, we want to do here. 
2 times 5, then 4 times 8, then plus 7 times 1. So we are multiplying the elements, the corresponding elements here. Now with MATLAB, see that if I create the vector x with the components 2, sorry, uh, 2, 4, 7, like that, and y with the components 5, with the components 5, 8, 1, like that. Then I can I can write uh, x. Then I use dot then times y. And uh, let me call this uh, this m. Let me call this one m. This equals to that. When I run, I should get an output m would be a one by three matrix or a one by by or a row vector with the the elements of m being the products of x and y i don't want the outputs for these two i just want the output for m and let me run this one when i run i see now m m is equals to 10, which is 2 times 5, then 4 times 8, which is that 2, 7 times 1, which is 7. So now if I write uh, sum of m, this will now add the values that we have here. And uh, I'll get the sum, which is the same as what I was expecting here. 10 plus that 2 plus uh, 7, which is 49. So this will give me exactly what I've, I've, I've done as the dot product manually here. So I can as well, instead of writing this 2, I could have written here sum so that I get the output as sum of m, the output as sum of, I don't need this statement here. I don't need the two lines. I can just write m is equal to the sum of x dot times y. That should give me the answer directory as the dot product, which is 49. m is equal to 49. So in this case, you're multiplying 2 times 5, 4 times 8, 7 times 1. It's equals to 49. But if if I, I just want a matrix which is just the product of x and y, the corresponding element of x and y, I will just write uh, x dot uh, then times y. We call this the dot operator. We call this the dot operator so that the x, y the product. Now uh, I can I may want to square each element of x here. So I want 2 squared, 4 squared, 7 squared. So I can call that matrix uh, matrix uh, as x square. Then I'll write uh, x then dot the square we'll it the power if you want to write uh, x squared i use uh, this operator let me remove this one here let me put it somewhere else if i want uh, to square, let me use a section break here, yeah, and use a text, and then use the square, square operator, or the power, 
the power. Use this uh, hat that you, sh you use a shift, then you press six on your keyboard. So, for example, it's when we want to write, uh, for example, when we want to write uh, x to the type to write uh, to write. Set to write or to get uh, x squared. Let me use the equation. Equation here x raised to power 2 in matra. We type x, then the hat, then 2. That will give us the square of x. Now, if x is a scalar, we just get uh, x. Say, say for example, let me put a section there. So, if we have a scalar a, which is equal to 3, and uh, I type uh, a squared, I'll get 9. I'll get 9. The answer is 9. If I type power 4, I'll get 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 8 to 1. So I type there, I get 8 to 1. But now, if, uh, if I have my x here, which is a vector, a vector I cannot, uh, I cannot type x raised to power 2 for a vector, because now x is a vector. My x is a vector with the elements 2, 4, 7. So this one is not possible. If I try to learn this one, it will give me an error. There will be an error. You can say error using the power operator. One argument must be a square matrix or the other must be a scalar. So, and it is suggesting use the dot operator for element wise power. So I will use uh, the dot operator there and I'll get the output which is which is which I want to call uh, x square I want to call this one x square I want to type x here so that uh, we can have, we can reproduce x here to compare whether, the, whether what we are getting is what we are expecting. So when I run, I have the x with the elements 2, 4, 7. Then the square of x, which is uh, that, 4, 16, 49. So uh, we shall look at uh, more of these operations in the next video. So for now, I want to stop at that. I will do another video to continue with more operations. Thank you.